What I wanted to do today is talk a bit about three tips that I think could help people who are new when it comes to learning how to do websites and how to create HTML and CSS. Because a lot of times when people, they start out learning web development or just any sort of skill that is, you know, with programming or something like that, it can very quickly just get very confusing. And there's a lot of information to remember and, you know, oh, geez, how do you remember all that stuff and, and memorize it each time you have to use it? How does people not sit constantly with Google open in order to create something like a website. The secret is we do actually do that. Everyone does that. Even the people who's been doing website for 30 years, they sit with Google open. And that pretty much leads me into the first thing I want to talk about. Because when it comes to learning HTML and CSS or JavaScript or PHP or anything like that, when it comes to creating websites, there is a lot of information you have to remember. I think the number one reason most people, they, they stop learning how to create websites is because they think there's so much information and they get to a point where they think to themselves, I just don't have the skills in order to to become a web developer because I'm sitting here struggling just to memorize all the different tags inside HTML and everyone else is just sitting there doing it out of the blue like oh they have this library inside their head and it's very important to mention here you're not alone okay so you don't have to worry you don't have to sit there and think that you're unintelligent because you don't have the capacity to remember all the html and css that you're being taught it is something that every single person except maybe a few gifted people you know who starts learning something and it just sticks to their brain for some reason but everyone pretty much are sitting there learning html and css and they struggle learning those things that you have to memorize but the thing you can do to help yourself is just kind of like keep notes when i started learning html and css i I had a bunch of notes. I had 16 different websites sitting on the side inside folders just so I could pull them back up and just take another look at something I did in one of those websites because I can't remember all of it. So it's very important to keep notes. We all do it. Even people have been doing websites for many years. It is of course something that gets easier over time. You start memorizing things and it becomes easier to stick to them. And when you start getting into the habit of HTML and CSS, one more piece of HTML knowledge that you then have to put inside your brain once you, you know, start getting used to things is not really a big deal at that point. So make sure you keep a library of notes because that's a really important thing, especially when it comes to new people. Because when you start out, there's a lot of information out there on learning HTML and CSS. And it's just something that's going to make things easier for you. With that said, when you have those notes, don't rely on them constantly. One of the biggest mistakes I see people they do whenever they create notes is that they'll take those notes and all of a sudden they have this huge library of notes and every single time they have to do something they know is inside those notes because they wrote the notes themselves, right? So you get inside the notes, you pick out the piece of information and you don't really think too much about it. You just take the whatever code you wrote and you put it inside your website. And when you do that, you don't really process what exactly you're pasting in. My advice to you is whenever you're using notes, make sure you try to actually create the HTML first and then see, did you do anything wrong? Take a look at the notes, compare it. Oh, okay. I did do something wrong. So now I'll remember it for next time. Don't just take the note and just copy paste it in without looking at it or thinking about it. Cause then you'll never memorize anything. Because remember the end goal here is that you want to memorize the things inside your notes. The notes are just there to help you to better, you know, find it the next time you have to use it. But eventually you want to be able to use the things in your notes without having to pull them out and actually just paste it in. With that said, there is another thing that I often see people don't do, which I personally am also responsible of not doing myself occasionally, which is whenever you have a text editor, because text editors nowadays are pretty smart. Like they have a lot of things they, they show you and they do, and you might not fully understand everything they do, but a lot of things are automated inside your text editors nowadays. And whenever you try to autocomplete something, you know what I'm talking about, right? You go inside your editor, you write HTML, and then you get this drop down of options you can choose, and then you click one of them and it autofills everything for you. It's like magic, it's wonderful and it's really good, right? But one thing you have to remember is whenever you do that, it is probably in there for a reason. So if you see something that you don't understand, don't delete it. Instead, see it as a learning opportunity. So when you see something inside your HTML that gets auto-completed that you don't fully understand, instead of deleting it 
actually try to use Google to see what it actually does, because you might find that it does something very useful and you shouldn't delete it because it is there for a reason. A very popular example of this is whenever you create a image tag inside your HTML and it auto completes it for you, it will give you a alt attribute. And this alt attribute is not really something that has a visual effect inside your website. And because of that, people think, oh, well, you know, it's not really gonna do anything to my website. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click that delete button and, and just remove it because it's less that I have to worry about. Don't delete the old attribute, by the way. Now that we're here, I might as well mention it. <laughs> so whenever you see something you don't understand, Google it, because that's going to help you grow as a web developer and as a person who creates HTML and CSS. And it's just going to make things easier for you when you start, you know, getting all this information and putting it inside your brain. With that said, it is also my experience that when people that try to learn HTML and CSS and they learn something that doesn't actually have a visual impact inside your website, they also tend to be harder to remember. Which is why you should also go ahead and create comments inside your code, because comments may seem like a silly little thing that you know is not really something that we do that often but it is actually something you should be doing fairly often inside your code i can't tell you how many times people they write code and they don't put comments inside their code me too by the way whenever i create something that is just for my eyes alone but especially when you're doing something that is new information to you that you might not remember the next time you see your code or let's say you put down your website for about a month and then you return to it then you might need to have a refresher on what exactly has been going on inside your website so you know exactly where you came to. And again, we could take this example with the image tag, you know, you auto completed and all of a sudden you have this alt tag and you think to yourself, well, what exactly does it do? You Google it, you find out what it does, but then all of a sudden that information go inside one ear and then a month later, your brain starts to forget it again and just goes out of the other ear. And then you're sitting there like, okay, so now I have to re-Google it again to figure out what this thing does. So creating notes is just a very good way to tell yourself what your code is going to do. And it is something that I do tell Tend to see that people are a little bit embarrassed about. I just want to point out to you that there's no such thing as a stupid comment. Everyone puts comments in their code and sometimes it may be silly comments that you know should be obvious for people to know but that's what the comments are there for okay. It's not just for other people to see it's for you to see as well if you need to be reminded of something because remember we're all still learning when it comes to creating something like HTML and CSS or other programming languages. So putting comments in your code is something that developers do do quite frequently. So don't see comments as a amateur tool that only amateurs use because you know it clearly shows they can't remember everything. Uh, see it as a tool that developers use, especially more advanced developers that needs to make sure that when they hand code over to other people, everyone understand exactly what the code does. So it is very important to leave comments even as advanced developers. I went many years not creating comments because I didn't want other people to realize what I didn't know. So when we had to work in group projects at the university and that kind of thing, I didn't want other people to see that I didn't understand certain things. It's the same mentality of being inside a classroom and being afraid to like raise your hand and ask a question because, oh, what if other people think you're stupid? We're asking that question. But in reality, there's probably a lot of people sitting inside that classroom that are wondering the same thing. So don't be afraid to put comments inside your code. Make sure you do it whenever you feel the need to. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this little video and I'll see you in the next one. 